Everyone needs a hook. It's how you get people to click. You know what they say. Every click is another hour of life I have left. The Simple Series, Volume 54, Deep Water. There once was a boy cartographer. I will make it my mission to map these waters. As he sailed through uncharted territory, he proclaimed, I sail not for fortune, this is a voyage about discovery. A crew of pirates met up with him at the end of his journey. Pirate Maps, now for sale. The Daikaiju, or in English, known as the Ocean Beasts, or once further by its PAL title as Deep Water, is quite possibly one of the most frustratingly cryptic, yet oddly satisfying entries in the Simple series. Developed by TomSoft, the creators of such hits as Demolition Girl are typically known for sexploitation games with large-breasted jiggle women placed into shaky situations. My kind of developer, if you ask me. Though they were known to make some of the more successful, and by that I mean safer entries in the Simple 2000 series, they took a huge risk by making an open water seafaring game like Deep Water, without the security of having titties in your game to back up the lack of gameplay. That's a huge risk right there. What drew me to this little title was the presentation of the box art alone. Bold red text on a shark background. What more could you want? So deep water places you in the feet of Sheepak, a scroungy little boy that steals a rusty old boat and sets out on adventure to sail the seven seas. So I guess some sort of water world situation is going on and pretty much the entire planet is covered in ocean barring a few mountains here and there. It kind of has a very low budget Wind Waker quality going on about it. You sail from Donald Bar to Donald Bar to talk with bar patrons or other random NPCs to gather intel to find new missions, weapons, or clues to tracking down the giant legendary beasts that inhabit the murky waters. Now on the surface, deep water seems quite shallow, but there's a lot of interesting mechanics that kept my attention all the way through. Beyond sailing, what are you supposed to do? Well, you shoot a bunch of shit and you get a lot of money. She packs sails around and he gets attacked by things like like skeletons on surfboards, giant ghost ships, mermaids, and as expected, giant fucking sharks. You see, the box art wasn't lying this time around. That's truth in advertisement, way to go. You have a radar in the top left corner of the screen. It has all these little red dots on it. Those are the enemies. It's a little hard to read and took some getting used to because the ship is stationary in the compass and there's a bit of a delay. So you'll just often rely on sight and sound to find out where all the enemies are attacking you from. Sheepak cannot shoot and sail the boat at the same time. So he'll have to let go of the wheel, move around the boat, and aim his rifle. And this makes things really intense. At first, he starts off with just this rusty old boomstick with unlimited ammo. And he has a targeting circle, which you place over the enemy. And whenever it starts blinking, that's when you can shoot. The enemy AI is as dumb as it gets. They just sail directly towards the boat and occasionally fire projectiles at it. You can handle most fights by just gliding the ship a little away from the enemy's reach to stay out of their range and pick them off one by one. Once you kill all the enemies, you get money and that's mandatory for progression in this game. Oh, by the way, the enemies can run away so you wanna keep them in range of the boat otherwise they'll disappear and there goes all your money. Sheepak's ship has a health bar. So if you take too much damage from enemies, you'll sink 
and this places you back at the most recent bar you had visited, which fully repairs your ship, but at the expense of half of your money. You also have to monitor how much gas you have left in the engine. Starting off, you have a tiny little tugboat ship, and it doesn't hold a lot of gas. You'll run out quickly, and you'll find out that gas is extremely expensive, which might have been a commentary on gas prices in 2005. Regardless, there's an easy way to get gas and ship repairs if you're low on funds. Your ship comes with a mayday beacon that you can release when you're out of gas or low on health. A ship will pick you up and place you back at a bar, but also charges you half of your money. But if you ain't got any money in the first place, you just get a free ride. And here's a little math tip that's helped me out in real life. Whenever an Uber picks you up and you got zero in the bank, just tell the driver that you're gonna pay him half of your bank account. I get free rides. As you're sailing along, your boat will begin to overheat. So you can tell this is getting close by this temperature gauge and all the steam billowing out of this little toot toot here. Luckily, you can just run to your engine and dump some salt water on it to cool it down. This adds a little urgency during the game because as you're sailing along, you have to let go of the wheel, go cool down the engine, and then get back to the wheel. This might seem annoying, but it becomes routine after playing for a bit, so I got used to it. So She Pack takes on all of these quests. Some are as simple as backtracking across the sea, delivering packages or people from bar to bar. Others involve monster hunting. Now, from what I've gathered from the very, very few people who've talked about this on the internet, many players got lost due to the poor directions given to you by the quest givers. Seriously, I haven't dealt with vague directions like this since Simon's Quest. So, I'll save any of you potential sailors some trouble out there. When you see a flock of seagulls, sail towards it and just sit still. If you're lucky, a monster might appear. Kill them and you might get a confirmation information message if you killed the right ones. If not, well, I guess you just got some gold. Now to open up the next ocean, you'll first need to kill the area's big sea monster. And yes, this is the main draw of the game here. The first one you'll encounter is the Kraken. Look at this shit. A $20 budget title from 2005 outshines 2018 Sea of Thieves. Hi guys. Miles here. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I just wanted to show up and give you all a friendly reminder about the importance of citation. It's not only there to give the content creators credit that they deserve, but it's also the law. Check the link down below for all my citations. Bye! Deep water is home to some of the most terrifying and punishing boss fights I've ever encountered, not only in the series, but in all of video games. It's no wonder why no one else in the world has seen the ending. I I'm pretty sure no one else has seen it. All of the boss fights need to be activated in some way. Each boss is different. Sometimes you'll just need to sail to a spot on a map, and then there they are. And then sometimes you have to do something like drop a barrel in a specific location to trigger the fight. And then sometimes you'll have to solve extremely cryptic puzzles to open their lair. After the panorama sweeps, the fight is on. Usually you'll just shoot the monster until their life bar drains to about a quarter health. At this point, a green circle will appear and you need to rush to the front of the fucking boat, and I mean rush to the front, and aim that harpoon blindly to try and hook the monster. There's no target reticle for it. You're on your own, kid. You have have an absurdly small window of time to get there. One mistake and the monster will teleport or in some cases will swim away and you'll have to start the fight all over again. Once the monster's hooked, you can shoot the monster until it dies. But be warned, the monsters get twice as vicious when hooked and they throw everything at you and you have no control over the boat. Good luck. Now, if you're successful, she Pack will do a little dance on the corpse of the beast. Hooray! That's fucking scary.
So you did it. You beat a monster. And you unlock one of the seven seas to travel to. Each new area looks a little bit different and has uh, some different enemies that are a different color of the enemies you already saw. Budget game. Each new area will host new upgrades for Sheephack's weapons and his ship. And this is kind of fun. I always recommend upgrading the engine as soon as you can. This cuts down on travel time and gives you a little bit more leeway since you have a higher capacity fuel tank. There's no way to fast travel in this game unless you're abusing the Mayday, which you will. So take every shortcut available to you. Now the weapons come in rifles, machine guns, shotguns, grenades slash rocket launchers, and various types of barrels. Most all enemies will launch projectiles and you can shoot them out of the air. So in that regard, I would recommend the fast speed of the machine gun to take them all down. If you get surrounded by these surfing skeletons with cannons, they will fuck your life up. Show them. By the way, it's impossible to win against most of the bosses without a machine gun. Trust me, just save your money and invest it in the machine gun and machine gun ammo. Get the ones with the bump stock. Those are the good ones. They might be worth something on the black market very soon. Now before I show you the last boss fight, and trust me, it's worth it, I want to stress how much of a pain it was to get to it. Near the end of the game, you're given a mission to kill the God of the Sea, which sounds like last boss material to me. Four fishermen tell you that passing through four sets of rocks will trigger walls blocking the entrance to the Sea God's chamber. So what I did was place these beacon barrels in the middle of each of these rocks so I could determine which direction they represented, either north, south, east, or west. And no, they don't correspond to their positions on the compass at all. So you pull up your map and there are these little pink dots which blink and they clue you into which is which. As you pass through the rocks, you have to kill some monsters. When they're dead, you sail back to the wall to see what effect it had on it. It's a crapshoot. Just keep on sailing back and forth hundreds of times. There's about three layers to the wall, which will either open or close. You want to open all three. Did you do it? Good. Basically, I just kept sailing, fighting, and checking till it opened. Once it does, save that game. So then I get to the God of the Sea, which looks like some sort of crab thing. As expected, this is the hardest fight in the game. You shoot him, then you bait him towards you and unleash a swarm of barrels. Maybe one in ten will actually work on him. Then you hook him. Then he goes ape shit and just lobs a hundred fireballs at you. And if you don't have your machine gun, there's no way to defend yourself and you're gonna sink. Just keep shooting and shooting and hope to God the second circle pops up it's random but I still think it has something to do with barrels so get a hundred barrels and a thousand machine gun shells and I'll see you on the other side this took me around 30 tries to beat but I did it the god of the sea conquered man's dominion over the sea is proven we can all go home the end jokes on me the final boss is in another sea so here we are uncharted territories i don't think anyone's ever made it this far the antarctic part is the most brutal series of fetch quests in the entire game padding personified you'll go to a bar some guy will ask for something on the opposite side of the map going against the current with mountains in the way no shortcuts this will happen about six times. I'm not kidding. It's obscene how much backtracking is going on here. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see the final guy. So thankfully, you can buy these turbo boosts, which will send Sheephack's little ship rocketing across the water. It is the most ridiculous shit, and you barely have any control. Anyways, I spin around four hours on this section alone. So are you ready to see it? The result of 12 hours of my life? The creature never before witnessed by human eyes? A giant flying alien manta rain with hundreds of lasers shooting out of its face, coming right at you. Holy shit, 20 bucks well spent. It's not a bad fight actually, and one of the more well-balanced ones, especially in relationship to the god of the sea. When he's defeated, he melts into a glitchy mess of polygons. <laughs> I don't think the developers were prepared for anyone to make it this far. There's not even a proper victory title 
And then it smash cuts to a loading scene and then to the final title cards. Here you go. The gigantic monster fell to earth with a roar. Sheepak's harpoon had transformed the scourge of the innumerable harbors into a lifeless heap. The boy thought to himself, is this really the tyrant of the seas? Even its time has come to an end. Standing there, his point of view altered, just like the water is life to some, it is poison to others. The very fact that this planet had become so hostile to the men that had destroyed it was maybe all for the best for the planet itself. Men do nothing but destroy themselves. That ending was way too fucking deep. Hi, my name is Miles, I run Hikikomori Media. If you liked what you just saw, then please comment, subscribe, and say, hey, more simple series. You can find the unofficial written version of this review on Hardcore Gaming 101. Not affiliated with this channel, but if you want to read it, it'll be there. Just wait. Thanks for watching.